Yat eh bene. Oh, yat eh anoch schoche ya Orlando Teller e dashijene. Nasht eje de net hachi in slon tro het lini bashis chin. Tore chini dashiche do ashi hintashinale e kut al de nenschle. Ah, you see, nasha e chendle hodige e a de shi ya ho a. Do obtin banash nishige e President Biden, do Secretary Pete Buttigieg e banash nish. Good morning, everyone. My name is Orlando Teller. I am a Zuni people adopted into the Red Street Forehead clan, born for the Water Flows Together clan. My mother's grandfathers are of the Bitterwater people. My, my father's grandfathers are the Salt people, and that's who I am as a Navajo. I'm originally from a small community called Chinle, Arizona, which is the heart of the Navajo Nation. I'm proud uh, high school graduate of Chinle High School. Um, and uh, currently serve as your Assistant Secretary for Tribal Government Affairs. And it is because of you all, your staunch advocacy, your leadership in the Indian country in the United States that had advocated and uh, really pushed for this Office of Tribal Government Affairs. It is also because of your advocacy that you were demanded a seat at the table at USDOT. And because of that, I am so humbled to be your first Assistant Secretary for Tribal Government Affairs at USDOT. And there, thank you. A lot, of, a lot of work out there, a lot of needs out there for all of us when it comes to transportation. As my late mother would say, as soon as you leave the door, son, I expect you to be home. And that's what our family expect, right? As soon as we leave the door, they expect us to be home safely. And so knowing that and feeling that and understanding that this position, this job is critical to our people to travel from A to B, C, D and back home again in, safe, uh, in a safe manner. So school bus routes, roads, um, trains, planes, automobiles, uh, even pedestrian trails, all important to this opportunity. So we have been, uh, in the Office of Tribal Government Affairs uh, is, has been stood up uh, last year. Uh, we are building capacity and expanding our staff. We just hired a young uh, native um, graduate from Haskell University, uh, and he's, work, he's been working for us for two months now. We have uh, a we're in the middle of interviews for a tribal specialist. And then by summer, we should have a financial specialist so that we can continue our self-governance program, but also most importantly, expand on our Office of Tribal Government Affairs to meet the needs of, of all of you in this room. We're also um, continuing our transportation engagements, tribal transportation engagements. Uh, and encouraging tribes to continually submitting grants. The bipartisan infrastructure law uh, is still active and we wanna continue uh, encouraging all of you to submit for grants, to call my office, to call me directly. Uh, and uh, if you need technical assistance, we certainly are there to provide and guide you in those um, needs. I will be providing my cell phone number at the end as well as my email address. Uh, this is a cell phone that you'll be texting and calling. I give this out for a reason. I once was sitting in your seat at many conferences and I didn't know who to contact. I didn't know who that face was. I didn't know who that person was, but I needed to talk to someone at USDOT. And so I'm that person and I wanna make sure that we uh, maintain our openness and our dialogue to all of you at the Office of Tribal Government Affairs. We've also updated the Tribal Transportation Consultation Policy, which hasn't been updated for over 20 years. Got, got into the office and I asked why hasn't this been updated, let's do it, let's get it done. We got it done. At the same time, we started talking with our brothers and sisters on the Hawaiian Islands and realized that they needed a consultation policy as well. And their issues and concerns are quite complicated and complex. Uh, and so we are in the middle of 
adjudicating the first round of consultation uh, to uh, produce the Native Hawaiian transportation consultation policy. And this summer I'll be going back to Hawaii to do the final consultation and work closely and make sure that we get uh, our brothers and sisters uh, on the islands um, voice in this policy. As you heard uh, from the, the, the wonderful ladies uh, from the White House Council of Native American Affairs or the White House, as well as from OMB, we're working closely at USDOT uh, with the White House Council of Native American Affairs, uh, providing deliverables. Uh, some of our deliverables was a tribal aviation symposium, which reminds me, if tribes here that have airports, please see me, there is, um, uh, we need to see some active uh, expenditures on your entitlements. Um, and also there's funding out there for your airports or if you have heliports or if you have uh, advanced air mobility conversations. Uh, I'd like to continue the push for tribal engagement when it comes to aviation, aerospace, and aeronautics. So we have uh, deliverables that we're going to provide to the White House at the end of this year again. And what to look for we have a virtual job fair coming out in March 7th. I'll be sending out a letter to all of you uh, to uh, encourage um, uh, someone in your nation, a youth, a recent graduate, to consider working for USDOT, interning with us, uh, as well as continuing that effort, as you heard from Congressman Portola, uh, populating a need here in Washington, D.C. to represent us, because we all know representation matters. You'll be seeing us at RES. You'll be seeing us at other tri uh, thriving communities events. We were there last week at Showwater Bay. We'll be at Standing Rock. We'll also be promoting and assisting with the uh, TTAPs, Tribal Transportation Assistance Programs, as they host summits. We'll also be at uh, NTEC. And hopefully I don't show up with my shorts and t-shirts and flip-flops I did two years ago in uh, Kentucky. But that was a story to share, right? It really was an honest uh, situation where even I at USDOT uh, had my bags lost. Um, you know, they didn't come about two days later, so I felt crunchy by that time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Navajo. I feel crunchy all the time. <laughs> so, I, again, I cannot stress enough to all of you. Please submit a grant. Please. It is imperative. I know we're grant fatigued. I know that we have issues such as the cost-benefit ratio as a criteria to a grant. But there are other values that are evaluated other than this ratio. And someone sits in the senior review team to help usher the conversation on and debate the values other than the cost-benefit ratio. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Put my behind to work for us to get our projects to a review so that you get the grants that you have been applying for for years and years and years. Yes, so apply, apply, apply. So here's my cell phone number. It is 202-770-9255, 202-770-9255. Text me first. Text me your email address and say, I need this, that, and the other. How do I need to do this? From um, pipeline and hazardous material to freight, to rail, to transit, federal highway, to even our routes program, our thriving communities program, our EV toolkit, anything that transports, let me know how I can help you. Uh, thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank you.